programmatic and branding and the importance of creative in programmatic. It has been the talk of 2015. Um, we get it a lot in my business, but the agencies are talking about it and the industry is talking about it. Um, industry quote, it is the biggest problem, biggest, biggest challenge and the biggest problem. And uh, it is a technological problem and I want to share with you some of the, the solutions that we've been involved in to, uh, to alleviate that. Before I jump into that, just, just have a look, quick look at programmatic. This is something that I did earlier. I wasn't really looking to buy that shirt, but I thought I'd go on to uh, John Lewis just to illustrate a point. And uh, 11.34, I thought, I know, if I go and try and find a shirt, then that shirt, sure as hell, is going to follow me around the internet. And there it is, uh, 11.35. It's a different color, um, which I prefer. But true to form, I was, I was had and then retargeted. And that's a classic example of programmatic where um, my data is being used to then bid on a media slot to get me because they think I'm interested in a shirt. That's fine and that's a direct response and that's really been where programmatic has, has, has emerged and, and become hugely successful. But what happens if what you want to do is something a little bit more ambitious, a little bit more to do with branding where multimedia and video is at the core of your campaign. Um, this is a classic example of a, uh, a high impact advertising format. It would have launched from a, a request from a user into a large canvas. How do we deal with this stuff programmatically? And the challenge is the delivery. And the big problem with uh, getting from here to here is that uh, for that expansion to happen, the code it's JavaScript for any techies in the audience. The, the code that controls that has to sit nicely with the code on the website. Because if it doesn't, it can clobber the website. And I've been involved in rich media for many, many, many years. And you, you've always have, that's one of the key, key things about making this, this type of activity work smoothly. And the issue there is if the code isn't tested and it doesn't work properly, then it, it, it will break the site. What does that mean in, as an existing dynamic? How do we deal with this at the moment? What's happening in the world of rich media? Well, for years and years and years, the manual tag testing has been at the core of it. So my last business was a company called Tango Zebra. We had most of the European rich media market. And I had a team of ad ops guys, and they would receive a media plan from, uh, from the agency. And they would send out the test tags to the publishers. So the publisher ad ops teams would receive these tags, test them, and if any changes need to, needed to happen, they would then work on those changes. And eventually, you'd be able to tick through a plan. And then the campaign could go live, and everything was good, because you knew it was going to run properly. But one tag doesn't work for all environments. And the problem with programmatic is that you don't know where your end user is going to pop up until you're ready to bid on them. So you have this odd dynamic. We're still operating this antiquated approach to manually testing sites within a programmatic environment. And that naturally limits the number of sites that you can, you can deliver to. Open RTB, you will have some tested sites, some untested sites. The tested sites tend to be premium publishers in a private marketplace. Um, and that is the challenge. So, what I want to share with you today is what we've been doing to solve that problem. How do you get expanding rich media formats to work within OpenRTB? And that's the, that's the big challenge with the market. We have a single platform. It's made up of three, uh, three elements. The first is a HTML5 uh, creative toolkit. You actually work in Photoshop. Creative agencies like to work in Photoshop, so you work in Photoshop. And you upload your Photoshop document to the toolkit, and it automatically turns it into an HTML5 ad format that is ready for any device. It deals with all of the devices. In the middle is a campaign delivery tool. It's a DSP, it's demand side platform. Um, when we built this tool, uh, we built it in a modular fashion and since launching it, we've integrated it with most of the existing demand side platform guys. The Med Media Math was mentioned earlier, but AppNexus and Trade Desk and some of the others. And, and that allows our agency clients to access the clever bits that we have in here uh, through an existing dashboard, or they can use it as a standalone. But this, the, the, the magic source here is, is this thing we call Sentinel. And it's, it took us two years to make. And it's, um, it was quite interesting, because the, the techies drew a well, they tried to draw a circle in their tech breakout room. It ended up being an egg. So there was an egg on the wall in this 
breakout run for two years, with all of these elements that we needed to get right before we could go to market with a product that could go out and analyze what was happening in OT open RTB and read pages in a particular way and make many, many, many decisions in real time to determine whether or not it could then deliver and how to deliver an expanding format. That we call Sentinel. And then uh, that allows the campaigns to run. And off the back of that, we have an analysis product. And then from that analysis product, optimization happens. So you then take all the data and you optimize it. So online advertising doesn't work. That's what we keep reading. Uh, it's more likely you will win the lottery than click on a banner ad. Is the case, apparently. Well, the average click on a standard ad is 0 0.06 from Smart Insights in April 2015. And the average for rich media is 0 0.27, apparently. Um, I think it can work. And it, we see phenomenal results. And the point that, was, that Claire actually made earlier was about reach. And one of the problems with programmatic and branding is that most people doing it have to do it, keep the, 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 the campaigns restricted by the, the pre-tested environment. And so you can't get, necessarily get the reach you need. Um, if you get the right reach and then you have cross device and you can target to mobile, target to tablet, creatively rotate, <coughs> allow stories to build, you can get very effective results. These are some of our verticals and some of the results that we're seeing at the moment. That is an online publishing um, company. Uh, you can probably guess, we should do a guess. You, you can guess which is what. That's uh, obviously lipstick, I think it's fashion and beauty. Um, no guesses to what that is, no prizes for that guesses. That was a pan-European campaign, uh, which was phenomenally successful. Um, this one was, one of these is a restaurant. That's a restaurant chain, and that's uh, clearly a burger. But I think it was food. And my, my designers who put that together, I said, do a food thing. And Donia put a burger on there, so that uh, gives you an indication. Uh, automotive and publishing, and that, yeah, that's a restaurant chain. These aren't unusual. We see this stuff all the time. Just to give you an, an example, when we launched the platform, I said to the guys I wanted it to be 1%, effective to 1%. That was July last year. By December, we were at 2.2%, on average, across the whole campaign activity. We're currently at 3.7% for everything. The average is across everything. And that's, that's what we're seeing off the platform. Um, that lot averages out at 5.75%. And... Um, According to my calculator, that's a 2,000% increase. Um, so to summarize, the, Julie touched on it earlier. Um, creative is uh, campaign branding and the creative side of programmatic is something that everybody's trying to solve. And it is going to be, I firmly believe it's going to be a big area for next year. We've seen phenomenal traction in, in our, in, within Scooter this year. Um, it is now possible to do all of this. Uh, brand safety, cross device, highly targeted. It's a, uh, it's a reality today. So it is time to get properly creative, and uh, the now is the future is now on that. So uh, thank you very much.